accurate. No one was able to interpret the dream to him except Daniel. Now, 62 years has passed from, from the king dream recorder in chapter 2. Now, at this time, Daniel is about 80 years old. Is in the, is in the latter day age of his life. And he says over here in Daniel chapter 10, verse 1, that in the first year of the Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and vision of his head, why on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream, telling the main fact. So Daniel is eight years old, is laying down in bed, and as he's laying down in bed, he sees a dream. And he also had vision in his head. And as, and as, and as Daniel received this vision and this dream, what it does is he write it down, the dream and the vision, he write down the main fact that he was seeing going through his mind, the main fact and the event that were taking place in his mind. Verse 2. Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the Red Sea. Daniel said that in the vision that he was seeing, which was at nighttime, he saw the four winds of heaven. Now, the expression, the four winds of heaven, represent and speak about God's sovereign power over the affair of men. So the person who is in charge of the event, they are going to take place, and then Daniel is going to, to write it down, originated with God, because God is the one who is in charge. God is, is the one who controls the affair and the event that take place in human history. Now, the wind comes from heaven, meaning that human history is always, always proceed within the boundary on God's will. L let me say in another word. Satan cannot do anything unless God allow him to do it. Satan is limited in his power, is limited in his knowledge, and is limited in the thing that he can do. He can only move within the boundary that God has set before him. We see this also in Job. If you read Job chapter 1, the Bible tells us that there was a meeting in heaven. The, uh, the, angel, the sons of God presented to the meeting, and Satan came along. And God and Satan had a conversation about Job. And Satan said, big deal, because you bless him. But if you allow me to touch him, I guarantee you he's going to curse you. So we can see already back in Job the Satan power when it comes to God's people and God's children is limited to what God allowed him to do it. And that's what Daniel saw in, in, at the beginning of this vision. He saw the, the, the four winds of heaven stirring up, moving. The gray sea. The gray sea speaks about the Mediterranean Sea. That's the sea that is located in the, in the region where, you know, the Middle East and Israel and the Promised Land is located. So that tells you to you and I that the vision that Daniel received from God has to do with Israel and also with the nation that surround the land of Israel, the nation that surround the Mediterranean Sea. So very specific. It's a vision that God gave to Daniel to demonstrate his sovereign po power over human history that has to do with the nation surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. Now, verse 3. And four gray beasts came up from the sea. So Daniel, in his vision, he saw the, the Mediterranean Sea being stored up. 
And as the sea is stored up, four gray beasts came up from the sea. And each beast was different than the other. Not every beast was the same. But the first one arose, and it was a, we're going to see what kind of beast it was. The second one arose was a different beast. The third one arose was a different kind of beast. And the fourth one arose, and it was again a different kind of beast. So John, John, I mean Daniel saw the great sea, the Mediterranean Sea being stored up. And out of the sea, he saw four beasts rising up. Each one was dif different than the other one. Verse 4. The first one, the first beast was like a lion and it had eagle wings. I watched till, till his wings were plucked off. And he was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to him. So the first beast, Daniel said it was like a lion. But he had wings like an eagle. I'm going to explain to you what the beast represents. Verse 5. And thunderly another beast, a second one, like a bear. The second beast, it looked like a bear. And he was raised up on one side. One side of this bear was, was higher than the other side. So as Daniel looked at this bear, the bear, one side is higher, and the next side is lower. And he was raised up on one side, and he had three ribs in his mouth between his teeth. And they said this to it, Arise, devour much flesh. Verse 6. After this I look, and there was another like a leopard. The third beast that Daniel saw was a leopard, which had on his, mat, on his back four wings of a bird. He saw a leopard with four wings, like a bird, in his back. The beast also had four heads. So I want you to picture this. It looks like it's a leopard. It's got four wings like a bird, and but it also has four, four heads. And dominion was given to it. Verse 7. After the third beast, I saw the night vision, and behold, a four beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. Now the four beast that Daniel sees is so dreadful and is so terrible that he cannot compare to any human, any animal in the kingdom of the world. So Daniel cannot find an animal in the kingdom of the world that he, that he can compare to, to the fourth beast that he, he, that he sees in his vision. He said he was huge. He had huge iron teeth. He was devouring, breaking in peace, and trembling the residual with his feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns. So Daniel saw this ugly looking beast with iron teeth going, destroying, devouring, and smashing everything in pieces. And he had ten horns. Verse 8. I was considering the horns. And there was another horn. A little one. So as John looked, and he sees a dreadful beast with ten horns. Suddenly another horn. A little one. Coming up among them. It's a little horn coming up among the ten horns that they were in the head of this horrible looking beast. And three of the first horn were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn, now it's talking about the little horn. It said the little horn looked different than the other ten horns. The little horn, there was eyes like the eyes of a man. 
and he had a mouth speaking pompous words. Wow. How would you interpret something like this? Now, as we look back again and we consider this four beast, we are going to, you know, if you go back to, if, when you go home to nine, you look Daniel chapter two. I mean, the vision was different, but the, the you know, the part of the beast there, the king saw, they are the same world power and world kingdom that Daniel saw in his vision in chapter seven. So, and actually it, it's a progressive revelation. A lot of time in the scripture, God revealed himself from time to time. It's called, it's called progressive revelation. A lot of time, God does not give a revelation all at once because people will not be able to understand all at once. So what God revealed a certain part of the revelation, and then he revealed more, and then he revealed more. That's, that's in Bible prophecy. It's called a progressive revelation that a lot of time God gives to us to help us understand events that are taking place and they are going to take place in the future. Now let's look at the first beast. Verse 4. The first beast was like a lion having wings of an eagle. The first beast represents the Babylonian empire. Remember I told you, Daniel saw the rising and fall of world empire, even before. So the Babylon empire was the empire that dominated the world when Daniel was alive. So the first beast, this beast that looked like a lion, and he had eagle wings, represent the Babylonian empire. In the Bible, Babylonia is also referred as a lion with eagle wings. You, you could find that in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 7, and also in Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 2. Remember, when you come to Bible prophecy, the Bible, Scripture, explain Scripture. So Daniel had this vision of this lion with, with eagle wings. And Daniel knew that the first beast represent the Babylonian empire. You can find many sculpture in history books that portray the Babylon empire had the lion with eagle wings. See, the, the lion is what? It's the king of the animal. The eagle is the king of of the bird. And the Babylon Empire was the, the ruler, the kingdom that ruled the whole world for many, 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 many years when Daniel, remember Daniel was taken captive from Israel, from, the, from Palestine, and he was taken to Babylon when, the, when, King, when King Nebuchadnezzar invaded the land and defeated the Israelites and took them captive to Babylon. See, the beast symbolized strength and swiftness. The lion is represent strength. The eagle represent swiftness. And the Babylonian Empire conquered the whole known world of his day. He defeated. It conquered and destroyed any other empire that was present during this time in human history. And as Daniel is watching and he sees this lion with eagle wings, he noticed, he said, I watched till his wings were plucked off. As Daniel is watching, he noticed that the wings the eagle wing that this beast had, it was plucked off. They fell off. And the beast was lifted up from the earth. And it was, it was made to stand on two feet like the feet of men. For you to understand this, you have to go back to Daniel chapter 4. In Daniel chapter 4, the king had a dream. 
And his dream, in his dream, God spoke to him. He saw, he saw the image of a great tree. And all the birds of the air were under the tree. But finally, the tree was cut off. But the roots remained in the ground. The tree could not understand, the, the key could not understand the dream. No one could explain, explain the dream to him. But then Daniel, again, was used by God to reveal to the king the meaning of the dream. And the meaning of the dream was that God had made King Nebuchadnezzar the ruler of the whole world. But God was warning him to keep himself humble. Because if he did not keep himself humble, God was going to cut him off. And he was going to become like an animal. He was going to live among the beast for seven years. If you read Daniel chapter 4, one day the king went out of his palace and as he was looking around himself and he saw the beauty of Babylon, he said, look. Look at everything that I've accomplished. Look how powerful my kingdom is. And as he was boasting about himself, as he was boasting about what he had accomplished, he became insane. God passed judgment upon him. And for seven years, he lived on the outside. He had to he eat the grass from the ground until the senses came back to his mind, he repent, he asked God forgiveness, and God restored the kingdom back to him. And that's what Daniel saw in his dream. As he, look what he said. I watch, and his wings fell off, and he was lifted up from the earth, and he made to stand on his two feet like a man. He speaks about when the king once again come back to senses. He acknowledged that all power and all the glory does not belong to him, but belong to the God who created everything else. And when he repents, God restored to him a, a, a human heart, and God restored back to him his kingdom. His kingdom. I'm just giving you a little summary, but you can read it in Daniel chapter 4. You know, about the judgment that God passed upon the king. Verse 5. And suddenly, another beast, a second one, like the bear. Another beast rise up out of the stirring of the gray sea. This one looks like a bear. Now, the bear represents the Medio Persian Empire. The Medio Persian Empire, it was the empire that defeated the Babylon Empire and took over the rulership of the whole known world. And finally, another beast, a second one, like a bear. Now, when, when Daniel saw this beast, he was raised on one side. One side of the beast was higher, and the, the second side was lower. The reason was because this world empire, it was a combination of two empires, the Medio, the Midi and the Persian Empire. But the Persian was more stronger, more powerful than the Midi. So the reason why the beast is one side, because it tells you and I that the, 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 the one of the two kingdoms represent this world power. One was superior and stronger, to the other one. That's why the be this beast, this bear, was raised on one side and the other side was lower. See, bears are known for their, br for their, for their brute strength. And the meat person rely on brute power to defeat, to kill, and to dominate the other empire that were present during that time. They, when they went to war, they didn't have to use any tactic. The only tactic they used was brute force. They would attack someone, they showed no mercy until everyone was destroyed and until most of the people were killed. 
So they dominate the whole world through, the, through brute force. That's why the second beast is described as a bear. Now, it said there, it had three ribs in his mouth. Now, the three ribs refer to the three kingdoms that the medio Medi persian Empire defeated when they became the dominating world power. One of the, one of the ribs represents Lydia, which, which the Medo, Medo persian defeated in 546. The second rib represents Babylon, which they defeated in 539. And the third rib represents Egypt, which they defeated in 525. Note it. And they said this to, oh, to it. See, when, when Daniel sees the vision, he heard a voice saying, Arise, devour much flesh. God, who is in control of world empire, had a task for this beast to look like a bear. And the beast was to rise up and to devour much flesh. See, we can see in this God permission to the medial, medial Persian empire to subdue and to have a dominion over the neighboring uh, country. So the first beast represents Babylon. The second beast represents the Medi Persian empire which succeeded in human history to the Babylonian empire. Verse 6. And this I look, and there was another beast, Leopard, who had four wings of a bird, and he had four heads, and the minion was given to it. Now the Leopard is known for his agility. It's one of the fastest animal living on the face of the earth. Now, the Leopard is really quick and really fast. Can you imagine when he has four wings behind him? It makes him even faster. It's, it's a gracious animal with, the, with wings it will become even most swift in moving around. Now, the third beast represents the Grecian Empire. Alexander the Great conquered the whole known world in such a quick manner. The history tells us that when he was 38 years old and he was standing by the Indo River, he looked around and said, there is no world for me to conquer anymore. And he wept. That's how, how swift and how quick was the, the Grecian Empire under the dominance of Alexander the Great conquered the whole world. Now we know that uh, Alexander the Great, he died very young, 38 years old. He died from syphilis. And look, but, but, uh, you know, look how amazing the Bible is and how, how the Bible is different from any other religious book. Doesn't matter what religious book you, you read, you don't find anything about prophecy. Not even Islam, not even, uh, not even the Quran has any prophet, prophecy. But look, look, look at this bit. So Daniel saw this leopard with four wings like a bird, which speak, it speaks about swiftness and, and, and quickness, and, and, it, and, and describe the quickness and the swiftness that, the, that Alexander the Great conquered the whole. But then he said, the head also had four heads, and dominion, or given to it. Now remember, this was written a hundred and a hundred years before it actually took event. See, the forehead tells us that when, when Alexander the Great died, is the empire that he had conquered, it was divided among his four generals. That's why in Daniel's vision, he saw that the beast had four heads. He speaks after Alexander the Great death, the kingdom that he had conquered, 
he was divided among his four general. I'm giving you the, just for curious, I'll give you the name of the general. The first general name was Ptolem, and he took rulership over G Egypt and Palestine. The second general, his name was Seleucius. He took, uh, he took authority over Syria and Babylon. The third, rule, the third general, his name was Cassander, and he took, he took over Macedonia and Thrace. And the fourth general name was Lysimachus, we took over, over Asia Minor. So as you can see, when Alexander the Great died, his kingdom, the kingdom of the conqueror, he was divided to his four generals. Each general took a part of the land that he had conquered. Verse 7. Like I said before, after this I saw in the night vision, and behold, the four beasts dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. Now Daniel cannot match, like I said before, he cannot match this beast that he sees with any beast that he knows. That's why he said he was dreadful, terrible, and exceedingly strong. That's, that's the only way it could describe with ten horns. And as Daniel is looking to this dreadful, terrible, ethically strong, notice he had huge teeth. It tells you about the, the destructiveness, the brutality this beast. Now this beast represents the Roman Empire. Rome ruled the whole known world for more than a thousand years. Rome, Rome was merciless. Rome would attack, destroy everything, kill, and whoever it was not killed, it was taken back to Rome and parade in the city to, lo to let all the Roman citizens see the power of the Roman Empire. They were humiliated in front of every Roman citizen. Rome was br brute. Now, it was devouring, it was breaking peace, it was trampling the residual under with his feet. And Daniel said he was different from the other beast. He had ten horns. Ten horns. Ten horns represent ten kingdom, ten nation within the old Roman Empire. Now look at verse eight. Let me let me explain to you. And Daniel is looking. You see a little horn coming up among the ten horn. This, this little horn looks different. Notice not the other one, he, does, he doesn't say about the, the other ten horn. He just said there were ten horn. But this one, he said that he had eyes. Like the eyes of a man. And also he had a mouth that he spoke pompous words. Now, Daniel had a hard time understanding what this beast is. He has no clue. So let's go down to verse 15. Verse 15. Daniel was grieved in his spirit within his body, and the vision of my head troubled him. Daniel is troubled by the vision. Especially this fourth beast, because he cannot understand what it means. He knows about the other three beasts. But this one is, is trouble. It's trouble. Verse 16. And I came near to one who stood, of those who stood by. So there was, in this vision, there was, there was this angel that was standing by. 
So, so Daniel approached one of them, and he says, and he asked him the truth of all this. He said, hey, basically, said, can you explain to me what this vision means? Can you explain to me what the four beast meaning is? So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of this king. So the person that was standing by that Daniel approached him, gave him, interpret to him the meaning of the dream. Verse 17. Those great beasts, which are four, and we saw the four one, are four kings. See, I told you, but I said they are four kingdoms. The king means it's a king will rule it upon a kingdom. So he said, those great beasts which are four are four kings which arise out of the earth. So the angel said, you, in your vision, he saw the rise and the fall of four human beings. They are going to take place in human history. One will arise to power, then he will be defeated. The next kingdom will arise to power, he will be destroyed. Then the third kingdom will rise to power, then he will defeat it, defeat it and destroy it. And then the fourth one will rise up to power. See, the angel explained that the four beasts, represent for earthly empire, which will rule the whole world. Now, give me verse 23. The four beasts shall be a four kingdom on the earth. So this, this ugly, dreadful, terrible beast, with Daniel saw with iron teeth, the person told Daniel he represents a fourth kingdom that will rule upon the earth. It shall be different from all the other kingdoms. And it shall devour the whole earth. Like I told you, Rome ruled the whole known world for more than a thousand years. No world empire has ruled any larger amount of land more than the Roman Empire, and God revealed it to us, which shall be different from all the other kingdoms, and he shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it down in pieces. Break it down in pieces. Verse 24. The ten horns are ten kings, who shall ri arise from this kingdom. And another shall rise up to them. The Roman Empire came to power. It dominated the whole world. It was defeated by the barbarian, but actually they were defeated from within. If you, if you really, uh, uh, you know, study it, Roman Empire, the Rome, because of the weakness of, of, of its leader and because or because of the of the lack of of, of, more, of the lousy morality, they got involved in all kind of sin, and God and God brought judgment upon them. So Daniel, so the the the, the person that was standing next to is is explained to Daniel that in the, now we switch and now we're going back to the end time. The angel said that in the end time. Ten king, ten nation will rise up out of the land which Rome dominated more than 2,000 years ago. So as we draw near to Christ's return, we are going to see nations which, which are located within the boundary where Rome rule come up to power, which this was actually fulfilled. What, 50 years ago, 70 years ago, with, with, the, with the formation of the UU, U, 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 the European Union. The Op European Union comprised all the nations in Europe and around Europe that were situated in the land where Rome damaged. Do you see how Daniel see 
history coming to pass. He saw the, Ro the Babylon Empire, the Media Persian Empire, the, the Greek Empire, and now he saw the Roman Empire, and now God brings him back to the end time where God prophesied there in the end time there is going to be a, a revived Roman Empire, which we already have it. And he said that out of the ten, out of this ten nation, out of the ten kingdom, a little one came up. The little one represents the Antichrist. The Antichrist, it will come to power from, most likely from Europe, or from the nation where the Roman Empire ruled. And, and look what it said. The ten horn of ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom in the end time. Another, another shall arise after them. It shall be different from the first one, and it shall subdue three kings. After the rapture of the church, if you really follow, follow news, everybody speak about global government. Everybody speak about new world order. And they've been working for more than 70 years to establish a new world order, which basically is, 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 is this it's what the Bible prophesied from where the Antichrist will come to power. So after the rapture of the church, the world is going to be in such chaos that this man, right out of the blue, will come on the scene. He will display so much skill, eloquence, ability, and knowledge that the whole world will appoint him as the Savior of the world and the whole world will pledge allegiance to him and worship to him after he will come to power he will look what it said he shall subdue three kings three of this king when he will come to power they will rebel they will not accept him have their leader and he will defeat those three King. Verse 25. He shall notice, he shall speak pompous word. He will be a man with charisma. He speaks boastfully. He proclaims big word. Then when people listen to him, they say, Wow, we have never heard any man speak like him. We have never heard any man make the promise that he does. He, will, he shall speak pompous words. Notice, against the most high God. See, the word antichrist means, it could, it could mean instead of Christ or opposite of Christ. He will proclaim to be God. He will, he will tell everyone that he is the Messiah. He's the one that the world is waiting for. And to, in fact, to say the whole world will believe it's lie. Remember, we won't be here. The church is gone. So, you know, so we will not, we, we want to actually know what this guy has because he only be revealed after the rapture of the church. But, you know, God and Dana tells us they are of the Roman Empire. Out of the revised Roman Empire, the Antichrist will come to power. Notice, he shall speak pompous words against the Most High. He shall persecute the saints of the Most High. It means that he shall, he shall persecute the nation of Israel. It's not, remember, Daniel was written to the nation of Israel. It's nothing to do with the church. A lot of people make the mistake to confuse Israel with the church. We won't be here when this event are going to take place. Remember, Satan's goal has always been to destroy the nation of Israel. And he will almost fulfill his purpose during the tribulation period. And he shall intend to change times and law. He will not abide by times and law. He will make his own law. He will make his own time. And then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half time. Remember we saw this. Time is what? Two years. Time is one year. Half a time is 
half a year. So for three and a half years, the second part of the tribulation period, God will give him authority to persecute the nation of Israel. The Bible tells us it's going to be 1,260 days. That this figure, this person that will come to power, he will at attack and will try to exterminate the nation of Israel from the face of the earth. You see how amazing God's word is? And how God revealed to Daniel human history from Babylon all the way to the end time. And we see right in front of eyes all those things, the pieces coming together. Father, thank you. Thank you for your words. Thank you that you now leave us wondering or trying to figure out what's going to take place next in human history. You reveal it to us thousand, thousand years before he actually took place. And he gave us your spirit to help us to understand and to guide us into the truth, Lord. So God, we know and we understand that we're living the last days. So God, once again, we pray and we ask you, Lord, that whatever time is left before Jesus returns, you will use us to share the good news to let people know that there is still hope. You're still in the saving business. It's that you still your desire that no one should perish, but that everyone should come to repentance. And God, once again, we pray for the salvation of our family, Lord. God, we're gonna stand upon your word, we're gonna stand upon your promise, and we thank you for answering those prayers. So Lord, let our worship now be a sweet-smelling savor to your natural. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
on a rock and now I know Oh
precious Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Truly, Lord, have your way in each and every one of us, Lord. You are the potter. We are just clay, Lord. And the potter should make whatever pleases him with the clay. So I pray that each and every one of us would become pliable into your hand so that you can shape us, you can mold us into the kind of person that you want us to be, Lord. God, help us. Help us to live daily with the desire to please you and to fulfill your purpose, to fulfill your will, Lord. Thank you for everyone who came out tonight, Lord. They had a choice, but they chose to be together in your house to praise and worship you. And I know that you are going to bless them. You're going to grant them the desire of their heart. For you promised to us that when we delight in you, when we put you first in our life, when we strive after you, you will grant us the desire, the desire of our heart. God, I ask you to bless them. I ask you to keep them. I ask you to make your face to shine upon them. I ask you to be gracious unto them. I ask you to lift your countenance on them. And I pray that your peace, your joy, your strength, your rest, every blessing will be theirs every moment of the day. And also, Lord, that every promise will be fulfilled. And God, we thank you. Give us a great week. Help us to be about our business, but also help us to be about your business, too. In Jesus' name we pray.